Okay, throughout all the Bible, we're warned over and over again to watch out for false teachers. Take heed that no man deceives you. Right? So I want to give you an example so you know what to look for and what a false teacher looks like. All right, so here we got this Gary Henry who just put out a video. And if you go to uh, his uh, website and you go to his about uh, page, it says that he was in Bible college for six years, it looks like, right? Or at least studied something related to the Bible for six years. So and the guy's a, basically, he's a genius, right? And so he's going to teach us about Second Peter chapter 2. Obeying the Gospel, July 29th. Once saved, is it possible for us to be lost? For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. Second Peter 2 20 and 21. Peter's words indicate that it is indeed possible for a saved person to return to a lost condition. In fact, he says that the last state has become worse for them than the first. Despite what the Calvinistic once okay. saved always... So now he, he goes off on a tangent and he loses focus. But uh, just to very simply, he's saying that this is talking about going from being saved to being unsaved for if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. All right, so before I continue on that path, let me go back to here just real quickly to sort of show you where he's coming from. Right? Uh, let's see. How do I do this here? Let's go. Let's do it this way. All right, we'll go to Second Peter 20. Or, I'm sorry, Second Peter 2 verse 20 and then we'll look at all the versions I just want to show you where he's coming from so maybe uh, somebody out there might be able to connect the dots and see uh oh what happened here well let's try this again here is it not the same uh oh uh oh we're in trouble boys what happened Second Peter two twenty. Second Peter two twenty. I apologize for this. What's going on? Let's do it this way. There, that's weird that it didn't show up like that. It should have. But basically, because you see right here, it says the same thing. ESV. All right. Then you look at these other uh, that these other versions that are. I think they're just extensions of the ESV. They're just uh, putting titles, different titles on their books so they can make more money that way. But nevertheless, um, I mean, it's awfully strange that they're word for word the same. All right, but it's, it's essentially, he's coming from the ESV. All right, and that's all I wanted to show, share with you there. But so now, in discussing Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22, is this talking about saved people and then getting entangled in the pollutions of the world or um, all that stuff? Okay, that's the question, right? Is this talking about saved people who then uh, are overcome by uh, the temptations of the world and after they've lost their salvation it's worse for them 
than from the beginning. So obviously, I mean, this is a weird way of looking at stuff, and I can't hardly imagine it myself, but he's essentially saying the dog is saved, and then the dog is unsaved and returns to his vomit again. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, this is clearly talking about people who are not saved, who come to the knowledge of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and they know what the gospel message is, and then they reject it and go back into the world and get tangled into the, uh, the whirlwinds, if you will, of the world, and now they're not saved, and they know the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's worse for them in that in that uh, situation than it is if you were just entangled in the world and the world caught up in the whirlwinds and not know the gospel. Okay, because when you're in that situation where you're caught up in the world, you uh, you know most people or some people anyways they they look for an escape and then they hear about the Lord Jesus Christ and they're able to make that great escape they're able to overcome the world by putting their faith in Jesus Christ but now these people they were in that situation and they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and they rejected it anyways it's worse for them because they have the knowledge and know the Lord Jesus Christ they know the gospel right but they reject it and they chose the world instead all right so that's that's it's so easy to understand that what this guy is talking about as well the dog he was saved and then he 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 was then he got unsaved by what by doing what what did he do he got tangled up in the world he tripped and fell and lost his salvation makes no sense but what's even more curious about this is what second peter chapter 2 is talking about this is unbelievable really in my opinion it's amazing absolutely amazing so let's open it up to second peter chapter 2 what's the very first line but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that brought them, or that bought them, excuse me, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Okay, and many shall follow the pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Okay, and let's just go through this. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So let me open this up a little bit. All right, so for God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them unto the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the, in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that are af, that those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. For chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of the uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing and accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. 
having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of righteous unrighteousness, Excuse me. but was rebuked for his inequity. The dumbass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. All right, and then I'm going to leave you with one more verse. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can, if it's still here in the Bible. You never know, right? If you believe the Mandela effect, you never know. Maybe it's not there anymore. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. What's that all mean? Well, it's very simple. Once saved, always saved.